Xavier, what did you do before you started this distillery? Um, so I'm a, I'm a brewer. I've been brewing uh, commercially since uh, I was 17 years old. So um, yeah, commercially brewing before I could leg legally drink, which is pretty cool. Um, and to be honest, I had a very lucky path uh, so far, uh, being at Venter Brewery on the island here for 15 years, uh, then having two years with Molson Coors, so a bit of corporate big brewery life. Um, after that, went to Ireland, um, was given a great opportunity to set the brewery up over there, create an Irish lager. Um, then came back, started working with Goddard's Brewery, local brewery here on the island, which I'm um, still involved with. And then Conrad and I decided to uh, get together and get the distillery uh, underway. So I see you've extended the distillery. When does that, that new part get on steam, on so, tap? Hopefully within a week's time. So um, yeah, we just had a new extension, so a new still room uh, built, uh, all bonded, all, all the license through with um, HMRC. Which again took a while um, but we've got the thousand litre still in there now which is um, geared up for increasing the capacity for the gin also allow us also to crack on with the whiskey which is our um, original idea of getting the distillery set up in, in the first place so yeah so tell me about this whiskey have you already put some barrels aside so we have um, so we've got our, our first barrels have come of age so legally they've had their three years maturation in oak that was part of our idea of getting the Isle of Wight distillery uh, set up in the first place um, so we're using Isle of Wight barley, working closely with the Isle of Wight farmers. Uh, we've got great soil conditions, the microclimate we've got, so uh, we produce some really good brewing and distilling barley over here. We have it malted at Warminster Maltings uh, with Chris Garrett. So it's malted, brought back. We use, uh, working with uh, Goddard's Brewery, just up the road. We've created our own um, uh, wash recipe. So a strong unhot beer. And again, coming from my brewing background, um, yeah, 9.2% unhopped wash using uh, a whiskey yeast. Um, and also coming from the brewing background, having creating our wash as if it's a, a beer or an ale. So having a longer, smoother uh, fermentation, not allowing the temperature uh, to go above 24 degrees, which naturally the, the, the reaction of the, the yeast and the fermentation is exothermic. So the temperature would go up to 30, 35 degrees, creating all sorts of undesirable uh, flavors so uh, fermenting our wash uh, in the way that we do for, as a, a brewer's point of view, we'll have a, a smoother uh, wash to still and it gives us a smoother spirit. So we won't need as long uh, maturation so that those undesirable uh, flavours, congeners mellow out over a period of time. So. As well as a gin, a vodka and a whiskey, you also do a, a Royal a Navy rum. Can you tell us about that? We do. Um, so we launched um, HMS Victory Navy Strength Gin uh, in partnership with the National Museum for the Royal Navy. Um, that's been a great partnership, selling really well. 5% uh, of the sales go back to the ongoing restoration of HMS Victory. The, uh, they then came back to us and said uh, it'd be great if we could uh, produce a rum for them. So. Um, Went off trying to see, have we got any uh, sugar cane on the island? No, we haven't. Uh, any sugar beets? It's not going to work. Um, looked at possibly um, creating our own wash with uh, blackstrap molasses. Uh, and then talking to the National Museum for the Royal Navy, again, we've got all the archives of the original Navy strength. It was never distilled uh, in the UK or in England. So it was the naval officers, as they were sailing around the Caribbean, that they would pride themselves going off to the various islands, sourcing the, the, the best rum that they could, creating their own blends uh, at 57% net Navy strength. So on the back of going through the archives and working with the Navy on this, um, also with the partner, we're bringing in uh, rum already aged from Guyana, Trinidad and Jamaica, blending them together, uh, further resting them in oak with an oak stave from HMS Victory herself actually in the barrel. So the, the rum um, actually has a true bit of character from Matron's Victory herself in, in the rum. So uh, it's very much um, a, a dark, rich, molasses, licorice flavour. Um, and it, uh, yeah, it's going well, really good. The Navy are certainly uh, on board with it. <laughs> How important is uh, sustainability to mermaid gin? Uh, it's it's yeah, really important to us. Uh, we're hugely passionate about um, how we operate as a company. Uh, again, we're still quite new and young, but we've got big ambitions um, with our sustainability and our sort of impact on the environment. We're completely plastic free. So even down to, to the cork itself, uh, we use the highest quality natural cork, wooden stopper, 
even the, the glues um, that are completely plastic free. Um, we have a tamper proof uh, cellulose uh, seal on the top which um, is plant based and if, if that's thrown on the floor within six weeks it just disintegrates to nothing. So we're, we're all water users, um, love the coastline here. So we're involved in all sorts of projects on beach cleans and um, just trying to support the environment that, uh, that mermaids live.